Real options part two. We continue with an example of an option valuation. The most simple example of a real option is the option to the fur. This figure depicts the option to the fur. On the vertical axis, over here, we have the value of the option or expanded net present value. And in the horizontal axis over here, you have the value of the underlying assets, so the value of the oil reserves. Consider again our oil example that we looked at in the previous webcast. Suppose we have a license for now for one year to develop an oil field. So in one year we can decide to develop or not and make an investment in the production platform. The present value of the expected cash flows from oil development is the underlying value. That's this value over here. And the exercise price of this call option is the investment to uh, develop the field or invest in the production platform over here. The time that we have to decide to develop the field or not is the maturity of the option. During this time of one year, oil prices might rise or not. So this value might develop favorable and increase the investment outlay to put down the production field or unfavorable that might decline. Especially important relative to the investment outlay. So if the oil price develops favorable and the underlying value increases above the investment outlay, we decide to invest in the project next year. So we get this value. This is the value of the oil reserve minus the investment outlay to put down the platform. However, if in one year the project declines below the investment outlay and we would make the investment, our value creation would be negative. However, we are not committed to make the investment. We have an option to make the investment. So in that case, we decide not to invest. So the value of the option is truncated by zero of not making the investment. So this 45 degree line over here is the value of commitment if you always make the investment and this truncated line is the value of the option when you only make the investment over one year if it's favorable. This is the value at maturity of the option. So the value at t is 1. We now want to know what the value of this truncated payoff is today. So that is the option value of this payoff. And that's reflected in the figure by this curve. So this is the option value. And we need an option valuation formula for that to determine this value. So that is the current value of the license. So that's the value that t is zero. So to summarize, we can see the license to develop the oil field as a call option on the underlying value, with the present value of expected cash inflows similar to the stock price in the call option case. The present value of the investment outline is the exercise price, so that's the investment to develop the field. The length of the deferral time, or the length of the time of the license, is the time to maturity of the option. And we have the time value of money is the risk free rate, and the volatility of project returns is similar to the variance of stock returns. To make a valuation of the simple option to defer, consider the following input parameters. Suppose that the underlying value is 100, and we also know something about the volatility. So suppose that the volatility results in an upward factor of 1.8, so V plus is 180, and a downward factor of 0.6, so V downward is 60. The exercise price or the investment outlay to develop the field is 80. That's over here. 
the expected probability of an upward factor is 0 0.5 and of a downward development of value is also 0 0.5. That are the true probabilities. We can estimate the current value of an expectation of 180 and 60 using the standard traditional discounted method. So the true probability Q times V plus plus 1 minus Q, the real probability, times a downward development divided by the risk adjusted account rate, 1 plus K, should result in the current value of this project. So in this case, 50% times 180 plus 1 minus 50% times 60 divided by 1.20, the risk adjusted discount rate, results in 100. There is also another way of valuing this, and that's calculating a certain equivalent and discount this certain T equivalent with the risk-free rate. So instead of adjustment for risk in the denominator over here, we start to adjust in the denominator. We can estimate something that's called a risk-neutral probability, and we call that P. So P times V plus plus 1 minus P times V down divided by the risk-free rate, discounted by the risk-free rate, should also result in the same answer of 100. And if we would rearrange this, and we know that the risk-free rate is 8%, you can estimate the value of the risk neutral probability at 40%. So P is 40%. Here on the left hand side there's no truncation in the payoff. There are no conditional decisions. So both results in the same answer. On the right hand side over here we consider the option. And in option there is a truncation, because when the value moves upwards, we make the investment decision and the payoff would equal 180 minus 80 is 100. But on the downward development, we don't make the investment, so we don't invest, because 60 is smaller than 80, so we truncate it by zero. And because we have truncated the payoff, the risk changes along the branches of the tree. And if the risk changes along the branches of the tree, we would, should have known a discount factor for each uh, branch of the tree. So on the right hand side, if we don't have these discount factors, the only right way to value this is using the certainty equivalent approach using risk neutral valuation. So on the left hand side, without any of the truncations, we can use both methods, but only here in the truncated payoff we should risk neutral valuation using the risk neutral probability P with adjustment in the denominator and discounting at the risk free rate. So how does that work? Well, we know that the current value of this conditional payoff is P times C plus plus 1 minus P times C downwards divided by 1 plus R. So we know that the risk, risk neutral probability is 40% times the truncated payoff 100 the 60% 1 minus P times 0 divided by the risk-free rate is 37. So 37 is the value of the option to, uh, to defer. So to summarize, if there's no truncation, we can use both methods, either adjustment for risk in the denominator or the denominator, that's over here, but once we start calculating an option, 
We only can make adjustments in a nominator using the certainty equivalent method.